welcome to King's Church online service. If you're joining us for the very first time, a really warm welcome to you. And if you're returning after being away for a while, you're welcome back as well. My name is Yetunde Bolarin. I'm one of the pastors of the Central Side, and I'll be leading our time together today. Today, we believe that God has amazing things in stock for us through some worship, through a time of prayer together. We're going to hear some announcements and we're going to spend some time um, to listen to the preach and hear what God has on his heart for us. Before we go into that, I want to read Psalm 100. It says, shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Oh, it says, you know, he made us. We are his people. His love endures forever. His faithfulness endures through all generations. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his, his courts with praise. So let us enter in today as we get into the worship session, as we take time to pray, lose yourself in all that God has for you today. In the preach word, let us engage on the platforms. Please make yourself known. If you are joining for the first time, say something will make you feel welcome. Um, and yeah, I'm going to hand over to Rochelle now to lead us in our time of worship. Over to you, Rochelle. Good morning, everyone. God is good all the time and all the time God is good. Let us sing of his goodness together. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me, you know, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free, always oh, free. I am. 
1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9 says, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. We are chosen by God and he has a place for us and we are free in him. Yes, thank you, Lord. Sing the bridge, I am chosen. identity is rooted in you. Help us to draw near to you. Help us to draw near to you.
Spirit of the Lord, it is here. The evidence is all around that the Spirit of the Lord, it is here. Let's sing that verse again. The atmosphere. The atmosphere is changing now. For the Spirit of the Lord. Evidence is all around that the Spirit of the Lord is here, overflow in this place. Fill our hearts with your love, your love surround us. You're the reason we came. The atmosphere is changing now For the Spirit of the Lord is here The evidence is all around That the Spirit of the Lord is here 
Take us deeper in your presence, Lord. Take us deeper in your presence, Lord. Spirit of God, full fresh on us. We need your kingdom come your will be done here as in heaven spirit of God full fresh on us we need your presence your kingdom come Lord, you are with us, Lord. You are always with us, Lord. You are 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 always with us, Lord. 
Yes, Jesus, we pray that your spirit would fall fresh on us again. But those of us who might not have encountered your presence in a long time because um, just with busyness and lockdown and just everything that's going on, but we just pray for a fresh encounter of your presence, Holy Spirit. We pray, Jesus, that you'd pour your love out upon us again, that we would know your love so deeply, that we would experience your love so deeply. And where we might not have felt your love or, or known that you were there, we just pray that all of us as this community would just know your love, that we would experience your love again, and that even though sometimes we don't feel it, we would know that you are there, that nothing can separate us from your love, Jesus. So yeah, God, we just pray for a fresh outpouring of your spirit upon us. For those of us who've never had a fresh outpouring of the spirit, that you would encounter us afresh today, Jesus. That we wouldn't go from day to day not experiencing your spirit, God, but that wherever we are in our workplace, working from home, looking after children, whatever we're doing, God, we pray that your spirit would encounter us afresh, that we would not carry on and continue to to be like those who who are dead in spirit but that we will be alive in your spirit god that we would encounter your spirit afresh and, and this would enable us to love others to pour out your love afresh on others god so yeah we just pray that today jesus yeah god we just pray that we would encounter your spirit afresh again So yeah, God, as we continue with the rest of our online meeting today, we just pray that you would bless us, that you'd continue to pour out your spirit, that you continue to speak to us anew and afresh this morning. Amen. Good morning, church. My name is Josh, and I'll be leading us in our giving this morning. Uh, you know, our God is such a generous God. He has given us his son. He has given us his Holy Spirit. And in 2 Peter 1 verse 3, it says, his divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Um, so because our God is such a generous God, uh, we should also be generous because we are made in his image. Uh, and one way we can be generous is by giving our finances. Uh, so thank you uh, for everyone who has been uh, giving so generously. Um, I just want to encourage us to carry on that way. Uh, we can go to makingjesusfamous.org forward slash give now. Thanks. Morning church. For those who haven't met me before, my name is Wumi Akonji and I'll be taking us through the announcements this morning. Speaking of people that have never met me before, if you are new to church or if this is your first time joining us, then please give us a wave in the chat if you're watching this live. And regardless of when you're watching this, pop to the website that's below should be somewhere in the chat on the screen somewhere makingjesusfamous.org forward slash new so we can get to know you more and so you can learn more about what's going on in the life of church i wish we were in person so we could catch up over tea and coffee but obviously that's not possible right now and i'm happy that people from anywhere in the world can join us so if you are new say hi and we would love to get to know you for all people old and new i want to encourage anyone who hasn't done so already to sign up to a zoom group right now okay maybe not right now but after the service sign up to a zoom group zoom groups are a fantastic way to fellowship and do life with people it's been really hard for a lot of us um, during the past year to connect with people especially as we don't have those sunday touch points so definitely join a zoom group which is more intimate and more interactive um, so join a zoom group you can receive prayer from your zoom group you can receive support and an array of different things so i definitely 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 encourage anyone especially those people who want to remain like connected to our church community and church family to join a zoom group and you will you will completely benefit from it like i have over the past year our week of prayer starts tomorrow um, if you want to learn more about the details for this and how you can get involved how you can come along then visit makingjesusfamous.org forward slash week of prayer I'm super expectant about what God is going to do during this period and I'm just waiting for God to transform lives, transform the city, Manchester and 
just come into us and there's so much power when we pray in unison and when we pray in unity so i'm really really excited for this i'm gonna pass over to judith who will give us more information about the week of prayer hi everyone i want to tell you about something i'm really looking forward to an amazing opportunity for us to gather with others in the church for an online week of prayer when the people of God gather to pray, something amazing happens. And I want to read something from Acts 4 verse 23. It's when the believers of God gathered to pray and after they prayed, something amazing happens. Acts 4 23. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. We're going to jump through the prayer to verse 29 and continue the prayer from there. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. Wow, what a powerful prayer meeting that must have been. The people gathered, they raised their voices together in prayer and the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. I do miss gathering in person, but we should not let this stop the church from praying with an expectation that there will be a move of God in the power of the Holy Spirit. Your voice makes a difference. Your participation in the week of prayer along with the rest of the church will be powerful and effective. The week of prayer is from Monday the 22nd of February till Friday the 26th. We will be praying together in the mornings and evenings. Maybe put that in your diary now, the 22nd till the 26th. On the Friday, we will be ending the week with an online deeper, which is a time, time of worship and will be live streamed on our YouTube page. How exciting, live stream worship and prayer. The last time we did this, we had so much feedback of how encouraging and powerful it was. So we would love you to be part of that by interacting with us on the live chat. You could even share your prophetic words or prayers. And during the week of prayer, we will be praying for different things, including the Pioneer Network, which we are part of as a church. Pioneer is currently holding 40 days of prayer by Pioneer Churches for Pioneer Churches. And we, as King's Church, have already been prayed for and we get to pray for others. Head over to makingjesusfamous.org forward slash week of prayer for all the details for the week. And don't forget to put the date in your diary, the 22nd to the 26th, and find out more on our website about playing your part of raising your voice together with others in prayer to God. And let's see what God will do. Thank you, Judith. Lastly, another date for your diaries is the 7th of April and we have Alpha Online coming back. So exciting. Um, Alpha is a great opportunity to learn more about Christ, to learn more about the faith, to answer any difficult questions people may be having. So if you think you'll benefit from coming and just exploring more about the Christian faith and learning more about it, then I will encourage you to go to makingjesusfamous.org forward slash alpha um, where you can sign up. And if you know anyone who will benefit from joining this, then definitely tell your neighbour, tell your, your neighbour's mum, tell your everyone that you can tell about Alpha um, and get them to come along too. Let's see lives moving, let's see lives transformed within, within our communities and that's brilliant and we'd love to see it. So definitely sign up to Alpha and, and share with your friends and share with anyone who you can um, and get them to join Alpha online too by the 7th of April, that's when it starts. Again, the website is makingjesusfamous.org forward slash alpha. Thank you. And I will now hand over back to Yetunde. Bye for now. Thank you, Wumi. This is the time we get to hear what God has on his heart for us. So I'm going to introduce our speaker. He's amongst us. Um, he leads King's Church along with his wife, Judith. They're a blessing to us. It's a privilege to have them. 
um, in our midst and what a gift that they are to the body of Christ. Um, I'm going to hand over to Richard now to give us the preached word. Over to you, Richard. Hello, I'm Richard and my wife Judith and I lead the team of leaders here at King's Church. If you were with us last week uh, or if you've managed to catch up online since, you must have been encouraged by Eden Sunday. Eden Withenshaw Park is our new partnership with our friends at The Message to reach out in a really focused way to communities on either side of Withenshaw Park. And we heard from James Bagley, one of the leaders of our Withenshaw congregation, as well as from John Hopkins, who is leading the new Eden team. And we heard from Graham and Ruth Aves, who were part of the first ever Eden team and who are still part of our Withenshaw community. And uh, I have to say, listening to the various contributions last week, I felt so proud of you all in Withenshaw. Not because you're the perfect church community, I'm really sorry guys, uh, but none of us are, but because you're having a go. I'm proud of you, John, because when the first lockdown came and the Revolution Youth Group had to stop meeting, uh, you didn't just sit back, but you thought, well, how can I reach out to people now? I'm proud of you all in Withenshaw who have consistently loved the neighbourhoods you live in. I know many of you were out last weekend delivering Valentine's gifts to express the love of God to people on your streets. You've owned a sense of living where you live for the sake of the gospel. And of course, there's so much more to do and there's so much more that we long to see, but you're having a go. And I think having a go is probably something that we need to learn to value and celebrate a whole lot more. I mean, sometimes we have a go and it just doesn't work out. Uh, in January 2020, I had a go at baking a cake for Judith's birthday and I have no idea what I did wrong. It's like I made unleavened cake. It was very Old Testament. I ended up having to make another two layers just to get the volume, but at least I had a go, right? And when this year came around, I didn't let my past failures stop me. I mean, when Judith showed me this video of what she wanted for her cake this year, I just thought, oh, well, give it a go and see what happens. And actually, this time it went OK. Sorry, I've got no photos of the finished product. Uh, we ate it all too quickly. But the problem is just having a go doesn't really sound very spiritual, does it? We tend to think that if we're hearing God properly, then everything we attempt will succeed. So if something doesn't succeed, then surely we didn't hear God in the first place. And what is more, everyone will be able to see that we didn't hear God. Everyone will know that we got it wrong. So I guess we'd better be absolutely sure that we've heard a direct instruction from God and that we're completely certain that we're going to succeed before we try anything. Unless, unless perhaps God doesn't expect us to have to hear a specific instruction for every step that we take in our mission with him. What if God actually expects us to have a go? What if having a go were to turn out to be entirely spiritual and biblical? Well, let's take a look at the Bible together. Let's read from Matthew chapter 10 and verses 1 to 15. Matthew 10, 1 to 15. Jesus called his 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and illness. And then Matthew names the disciples, so we'll skip to verse 5. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal those who are ill, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Do not get any gold or silver or copper to take with you in your belts, no bag for the journey or extra shirt or sandals or a staff, for the worker is worth his keep. Whatever town or village you enter, search there for some worthy person and stay at their house until you leave. As you enter the home, give it your greeting. If the home is deserving, let your peace rest on it. If it is not, let your peace return to you. 
If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, leave that home or town and shake the dust off your feet. Truly, I tell you, it will be more bearable for Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. Now, the reason that Jesus initially tells his disciples to take the gospel to the Jews and not the Gentiles is because God has promised to bring salvation for everyone through his chosen people, Israel. So they were to go to the Jews first. Now, the religious leaders among the Jews had developed a custom of shaking the dust off their feet whenever they left a Gentile town. It was like a symbol of them being superior to the Gentiles. So imagine the irony when Jesus told his disciples to shake the dust off their feet whenever people, especially the Jewish religious leaders, refuse to believe the gospel. The point I really want us to think about today is this. Jesus clearly didn't expect his disciples to be successful on every attempt at taking the gospel to a new village, town or region. He knew that sometimes they would not be received. He knew that sometimes they would receive little, if any, response from people. Or even, if you keep reading the verses that follow, that sometimes they would be hounded out of the place, that they might even be arrested or beaten or persecuted in some other way. Now, even as a human, Jesus knew how to hear the Holy Spirit perfectly. So surely he could have got a whole load of accurate words of knowledge and prophecies about which towns to go to. If Jesus was concerned about the disciples always being successful, surely he could have told them, do go to this house or don't go to that house. And actually, there are examples in the New Testament where the Holy Spirit does intervene with very specific instructions. But it's certainly not always like that. God doesn't seem to be quite the micromanager that we sometimes make him out to be. He's given us a very clear mission to proclaim the gospel of his kingdom, the good news of his loving rule and reign to the ends of the earth, to tell everyone everywhere about Jesus and to show them what life in him is like, to put all that is amazing about Jesus on display as we love people with his love, to offer them the opportunity to become followers of Jesus themselves. And sometimes he might send us to a specific person or a specific place but often he seems to expect us to get on with telling anyone and everyone, anyone who wants to listen. And we can see this illustrated in Paul's ministry in the book of Acts. Paul and Barnabas were called and set apart by God for their traveling ministry. And there were occasions when the Holy Spirit showed Paul that he needed to travel to a specific place. On one occasion, he traveled to Macedonia because of a vision of a man from there asking him to come over and help. And then later, the Holy Spirit showed him that he must testify to the gospel in Jerusalem and in Rome, despite the suffering he would face there. But on many occasions, we see Paul responding to opportunities and events that are going on around him. Whether it was preaching to interested Jews in a synagogue or curious crowds at a debating hall or the spectators at one of his trials. In Acts 13, at a place called Pisidian Antioch, Paul and Barnabas actually had to shake the dust off their feet, just like Jesus instructed. When they began to be persecuted by the religious leaders, they ended up being expelled from that region and had to move on to the next opportunity. They didn't see a massive response to the gospel, but we don't see them as failures. No, we celebrate their success. In some towns and cities, thriving churches were started, but in other places, very few people believed. There were even some places that Paul wanted and tried to visit with the gospel that the Holy Spirit somehow prevented him from visiting. And you'll find that in Acts 16. So Paul didn't just sit around waiting for the perfect plan to drop from heaven. He got on with the mission. He had a go. He kept stepping out and pressing onwards. And the Holy Spirit corrected him and adjusted his course where necessary. What if we were all to approach our mission in the same way? 
We know that every single one of us has been commissioned by Jesus to preach the good news. So what if we all just get on with having a go in whatever way we can and trust the Holy Spirit to adjust our course where necessary? How about in our connect groups? We think and pray about our local communities and then we all just have a go at reaching out in whatever way we can. Perhaps it's delivering gifts or cards at Easter with a personal note to your neighbours. Perhaps it's praying for more opportunities in your workplace to be open and real about your faith in Jesus. You know, connect groups can really help with this because you can pray for each other's friends, neighbours, colleagues, and then you can keep each other accountable about the opportunities you've had and how many of them you've taken. You could look for opportunities to volunteer or get involved in some kind of community action group in your local area. You could run an online alpha course for your colleagues or a small group of your friends. You know, we've got people who are experienced in running alpha courses and they could help you to set that up. And you know what? It might not work, but why not have a go? Your connect group could become King's Church in your local area. You could invite people to the group just like you might invite them to church. It might not work, but why not have a go? You know, across the church, between us all, we represent so many opportunities and so many connections through which to share the gospel. And the truth is that this is God's mission, not ours. And by having a go, we're really just exploring and working out what God is already up to in our communities. We're looking for ways in which we can join in with his work. Sometimes we seem to get this idea in our heads that the way that we're going to reach people is through some big initiative or scheme. Or that someone else will reach them for us. Sometimes we think that we need to pray for this big revival to come so that people get swept off of their feet and into the kingdom. And maybe one day that will come. But that doesn't change the fact that we've all been commissioned to preach the gospel now, to just get on with telling people about Jesus and the difference that he's made to our lives. It's not about trying to force our faith upon people who aren't interested. If people aren't interested, then that is their decision. But why not have a go? Not everything you try has to be successful. Not everything we try together as a church has to be successful. Because stepping out in obedience to our commission to preach the gospel, well, that is success in and of itself. Sharing the good news of Jesus is success. Being a witness to Christ and his kingdom is success. Finding the courage to have a go is success. And let's face it, nothing is going to change if we don't even try. How can we succeed in our mission if we don't even give it a go? Listen to this from Romans chapter 10 and verses 13 to 15. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. So let's pray together. Lord God, we thank you for the amazing work that you've done in our lives. We thank you that you sent Jesus and you just revealed how amazing, how awesome, how loving, how kind, how gracious, how compassionate, how just and mighty and powerful, how good you really are. Thank you that we have found a relationship with you in Jesus and it's made all the difference in our lives. And now, God, we thank you that you've invited us to be a part of your mission, to let others know about that great love, about how good and awesome you are. You've invited us to partner with you, to be part of making Jesus famous 
across our great city of Manchester, across Salford, across this whole region of Greater Manchester and beyond. We thank you, Lord God. You've, you've, you've caught us up in this mission, Lord God, and you've filled us with your Holy Spirit and you've, you've given us power and you've given us authority and you've commissioned us and you've, you've, you've given us this mission to be part of what you're doing in our world. And we say, Lord God, forgive us. Forgive us for when we've shrunk back. Forgive us for when we've put it off. Forgive us when we've been consumed with other things. Lord, we say yes to your mission. We say yes to your plan. We say thank you for the privilege. And Lord, we say yes, we'll have a go. We'll get on with it. We'll, we'll step out. We'll, we'll, we'll summon up the courage and we'll, we'll do what we can find to do. We say, Lord, help us. Holy Spirit, help us to be creative, to be innovative, to step out in new ways. And Lord, as we go and as we step out and as we share the gospel boldly with our neighbours and our friends and our loved ones, our colleagues, Lord, we say, make us fruitful. And Lord God, help us not to be afraid that even when we're not fruitful, that Lord God, we're still being obedient to you. Lord, help us not to fear rejection. Help us to be bold and courageous. But Lord God, as we go, we pray, would you correct us along the way? Would you steer us? Would you guide us? Lord, we won't wait for some great big master plan. We'll step out, we'll be bold, we'll be courageous, but Lord, would you guide us as we go? And would you make us fruitful in Jesus' name? Amen. Amen, and God bless you. What a powerful word that was. Thank you so much, Richard. I certainly was stirred by that word, and I believe that you were as well. I'd encourage us to go back and listen to this message from today over and over, as well as the other ones from previous weeks. God is pointing our hearts and our minds to what is most important to him. In 2 Corinthians um, chapter 5, verse 18, it says, All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. God is appealing to us to be the connection, to make a difference in our world, to preach the gospel in season and out of season. John 15 says, um, verse 16 says, you did not choose me. That's, this is Christ saying that to us. But I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit and fruit that will last. We've been encouraged to have a go. Take a step. Preach the gospel. Wherever you find yourselves, in our spheres of influence, in our workplaces, with our members of our families who don't know Christ. Let's take that step and have a go this week. And God bless you as you do. Can I remind us that this week we start the week of prayer. Please get engaged, be involved, be engaged in the um, sessions, um, be involved in praying together with people and let's see what God is going to do in our midst. God bless you as you take a step, have a go this week. Be that person that shares the love of Christ to your neighbor, to your work colleague in Jesus name. Have a lovely week ahead. Until next week when we meet again, it's bye from me. Bye.